Hello, this is John Lee with Dashboard Dudes. And are you a coffee person? Because I'm not. I'm a tea guy. I'm a tea person. John Lee rhymes with tea. It doesn't rhyme with coffee. Well, I guess it kind of does. It sounds better with tea. John Lee tea. If you watch Avatar The Last Airbender, I've been told that I'm like a young Uncle Iroh. I have long hair. I love fire. I'm funny, very wise, and I love tea. And I have rage issues. Terrible rage issues that I'll grow out of and then be adorable. I'm an only child, so I would prepare coffee and tea at night for my parents tomorrow morning. My mother got a little bit of a teaspoon of the Red Folgers container, which was caffeinated, and a little bit of sugar. My father got the decaf, the green container, with no sugar, and I would also make green tea for him for tomorrow morning. So all they have to do is just pour in some boiling water, and they're good. That was my job for them to get ready for the morning. And I just got really into it. It's probably the most posh thing that I do. And I'm owning it. I'm owning it because I'm who I am. I'm not thinking about data. I'm just thinking about tea. Data, tea, data, tea, data, tea. Nothing else. Nothing else is going in this head. So what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about different types of tea things. We're going to go over hardware and I'm going to go over different types of tea. And then what we add to tea and I'm going to go full nerd geek out on this. And I hope you enjoy it. But this is really just for me being cathartic. Okay, so right into it, what, what is tea? What is this tea thing? Now, there are different gradients of tea that we have, right? We have black tea, green teas. We have some more fluorescent teas, we have white teas, and herbal teas. Now, herbal teas are actually not tea. The ones that are like orange peel and stuff like that, those don't have any actual tea leaves. And it really, when we're talking about tea, we're talking about black tea and green teas. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to, hate on people who like floral teas and stuff like that. That's totally up to you. Not my preference, but whatever. You do you. So what I want to go over first is actually hardware. I want to show you the different types of hardware that I have for tea, why I use them, my preferences, why I like them. I'm going to full geek out on you, and you can learn some stuff. So with tea, there are four things that we can control to maximize flavor. We can control the temperature that we brew at, the brew time, how long we let it brew, if we're using loose leaf tea or a tea bag, I'm going to get into that one very much. And will we add to it? Are we adding cream? Are we adding lemon to it? There are different types of tea that require different types of things. So the first thing we're going to go over is the type of kettle that you use. This is my electric kettle. I like this because I can have different temperature control settings. So for instance, 165 Fahrenheit degrees for delicate teas, 175 for white teas, 180 for green teas, 195 for oolong teas. 200 for coffee, which I don't drink, and then boiling for black tea. And I like this because it can, it can maintain the temperature. So I'm going to hit start, and we're going to make a black tea today. I'm going to show you it's different types of teas. We're going to make a black tea and a green tea. I'm going to let it cool down. I like this kettle in particular because the color tells me when it's heating up, and when it turns white, I know that I'm good to go. So now I've done it correctly. Now, why do we care about temperature? Why do we not just put everything at boiling? Well, different teas have different temperatures because that's when they bloom and they open up and they really extract flavor. If you were to just put boiling water into a very delicate white tea, you can burn it. And I know you're like, but well, these are dry leaves, whatever. Right. But if you burn it, you're not really getting the flavor that needs to come out. White teas are very delicate. You don't want to just put boiling water into it right away. You want a little bit of a softer thing in there. Another great example is with other like peppermint teas, dandelion teas. You don't need to go full shebang on making it very, very hot to get the flavor out of it. You want to maximize flavor. That's the name of the game with tea. Maximizing flavor. Goldilocks, you have to be just right on it. There we go. That just turned white and the beep went three times. I love this kettle because now I know that I've hit the right temperature that I need, which is boiling because we're going to do a black tea. Now what's nice is I don't have to pour this right away. With a normal kettle that's on a stove, you don't really know the temperature and you got to pour it in. I can let this chill because this will always come back up when it senses that the temperature has decreased by enough. Okay, probably the thing that I'm the most nerdy about is definitely talking about teapots and different teacups, containers, all that stuff. Let's get into it. Let me show you the ones that I use, why I use them, and what situations you might want to consider getting a different teapot or using existing all right, first up is if I'm only going to use one cup of tea. Now, this is probably my favorite teacup of all time. I like it for three main reasons. One is that it's black. It's the color of 
my soul and the tea that I usually drink every day. Second is that this ceramic porcelain is very good for retaining heat. It's very fantastic to keep your drink hotter for a longer period of time, especially if you're going to be drinking tea over an hour for meetings or whatever you're doing. And last, I really like this lid. I like this lid because I can set it down and I can take my strainer where I have my tea in and I could just put it right into there. Fits perfectly. I'm not making a mess. And if you just buy the strainers, you have nowhere to put them and you're going to have to find somewhere. Otherwise, you're making a mess everywhere you go. Second, I like to use this round body teapot and I like it that it's made of glass. I tend to prefer glass over porcelain or ceramic teapots. While those are better at holding heat, I like glass because I can see what's going on. I think that it has a better pour, and I like that this bevel allows for some dust to collect. So I'll explain all this whole thing right now. Why I like this teapot in particular is because I have this plastic backing. So when my fingers are touching and I'm pouring, I'm not being burned. If my fingers were to just touch glass, it gets a little too hot in there. Too hot like that Nelly song. Okay, in addition, this teapot also has a strainer. I like loose leaf teas more than bag teas. Bag teas, I find, just don't have as much flavor. Remember, that's the name of the game. We're trying to optimize flavor. And by having a loose leaf tea, you allow tea to kind of circulate. So more of the surface area of the tea is getting exposed to hot water for a longer period of time, which is giving out more flavor. And that's what I like. Now, in addition, there's a very specific reason why I like rounded teapots. This one reminds me of like a, a mother hen type of thing. I like rounded teapots because tea, especially green tea, has something called tea dust in it. And if I'm pouring, you want those tea leaves to just be right here when they're poured and not in your cups. So if you can see it swirling around, that's just some tea dust and tea leaves that come through the sifter. And that, that happens all the time. But because I have this rounded little belly, it collects that. So when I'm pouring, I'm only getting very clear liquid. Now, this is my favorite teapot of all time. And I really like it for a lot of reasons. Number one, very good design. So if you can see in here, there's a little spiral. And what that spiral allows is it catches extra tea leaves that happen to flow through. So if you're doing like a, one of those teas that bloom and you add hot water to it, those tea leaf remnants get caught by that spiral. I think that is very, very, very smart. In addition, I like using a strainer. I don't like using tea bags. So I have this metal strainer, which I can put tea leaves in so that they can float around. Or you just put it directly in there if you want. Not a problem. In addition, I like having this rubber little stopper over my lid because let's say you have the, the lid very loose. If you pour, you risk it falling off. And I just don't want to even deal with that. So by having this, this has helped out. I don't need two hands. I could just pour easy peasy. Now, another good piece of hardware to have is an actual tea spoon. So this tells me the right amount of tea that I want for one teaspoon. I like that it is just the stainless steel metal. When you have ones that have wrapping all over them, those get dangerous because I've had those peel off and I definitely don't want that in my teacup at boiling water to drink. All right, one of the most fun pieces of equipment that I have is a tea timer. Let me show you something on this tea timer. What I can see here is I can see how far does the line have to go to brew different types of tea. So for instance, this says green tea, Japanese green tea, one to two minutes. This type of tea right here, Chinese green tea, two to three minutes. And then basically everything else is three to five minutes. And what I'll do, you'll just set it and I will just let that go until, until the right amount of sand hits the right section that I need it to be. One that I forgot to mention is my tea strainer on the go. So this is my tea glass right here and I have a little strainer and this little strainer right here is where I can add my tea, put it in. And this is a double hole glass container. So the first layer is where you have all the water and everything, but it's what the second hole protects my finger so that it's not too hot for me to grip. Otherwise, if I was just grabbing boiling water in a glass, it'd be too much. And what I'll do is this is dishwasher safe. The lid is not because it's wood. You don't want to put that in dishwasher. It'll dry it out. And what's also cool about this one is I have little constellations on it. I'm a big mythology guy too. So this is the perfect gift for me that I got 
for myself. Comment on your zodiac sign and I will tell you the story of your sign. I know every zodiac story, so you can listen to that while you drink your tea and think about me. All right, now I'm going to geek out. I'm going to show you different types of tea that we have. This first tea is a rooibos tea. It's usually very, very red, as you can kind of see it, it brewing already. This is a tea that has a very, very, very distinct flavor. It's a little bit gentler than a harsh English breakfast tea, but it's also up there with, but it's stronger than a green tea. Next, we have a chai, and chai means tea, so you don't need to say chai tea, it just means tea. That's like saying a tea tea. Also, naan means bread. You don't have to say naan bread, it just means bread. Black tea that has cinnamon, cardamom, and cloves, and that is so good. Next, one of my favorite teas, in addition to a English breakfast, an Irish breakfast, and even Singaporean breakfast, is that I like this Earl Grey tea, Earl Grey tea with lavender. It's very floral, it smells amazing. And this tea right here is another black tea that's gonna take a while to brew, but it is gonna be packed with a lot of flavor. This tea, 1870 Black, is my favorite tea in the world. It is very posh, I know, I know, I'm that guy but I think it is amazing. It is a black tea that has notes of strawberry in it, and it is the kind of the flagship tea for this, this Singaporean company, TWG. Fantastic, if you ever have a chance, get it. Knock it in the satchel, just get loose leaf, go get a teapot, have it the right way. All right, the last tea that we're gonna go over is a green tea, a Chinese green tea, more specifically a Chinese jasmine green tea. I like this more than the cut of a regular Chinese green tea. It's a little bit more floral, a little bit more fragrant. This green tea right here, as you could probably see, the leaves are not as dark and they're a little bit bigger and rolled up. Now we're going to brew some of this in addition to the black tea that I want to do later. I want to show you something about green teas. Now with green teas, we're gonna to have to do something a little bit specific. We're gonna do something called a double steep. Why are we doing a double steep? Well, what happens with tea is that when you have these tea leaves, they're plucked, they're dried, and they go through the sifter, and different levels down have different refinements of the tea. So all the way at the bottom at this little sifter is something called tea dust, and that dust makes it very bitter. Have you ever had any green tea at a restaurant you just drink, you're like, ah, it's just so bitter? That's because you're hitting the tea dust. We don't want the tea dust. We want all the tea leaves. So better places do that where you don't have any of it. So you don't have any of that tea dust at all. So basically gonna do this. we're gonna take some tea leaves, green tea leaves, we're gonna put it into our teapot, we're gonna brew it for only about a minute, dump the water, and then we're gonna brew it again. And that double brew, that double steep, is what's gonna allow us to get a lot of the flavor of the green tea without the bitterness that most people are usually used to. So I have our green tea in here. I'm going to pour it with my temperature controlled water, which is 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm only going enough to cover the tea because I'm gonna dump this. While that's going, I'm gonna put the lid on because I want that heat to help me out. I'm gonna set my tea timer. Okay, it's been about two to three minutes. Now you can see the color, the hue of this tea coming through. Okay, so I'm just gonna pour some of this tea into this glass container. You can see the color, it looks like a urine sample. Okay, so now I'm gonna dump the water and I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna dump the tea that we already did because we can reuse tea leaves. This is the bitter cut and we're gonna double steep. We poured out the first batch for the green tea. I pour this 180 degree water, Fahrenheit, into my teapot again, just to cover the tea leaves. You don't need to do more than that because then you're just diluting the flavor and making it too watery. Okie dokie, timer has hit two minutes. Let's pour this second steeped tea out. I know this is so nerdy. This is so nerdy, and I know who I am. But do you see the difference in the color? This tea was from our first steep, which is very dark compared to this very clear, it's like a clear broth, this tea. This tea, I will guarantee you, will be much more bitter than this tea. Like by not by 2x but by a lot x and it's just because there's a lot of 
it's your tea is opening up the first time. You could technically reuse tea leaves two, three, four times. You can use it a lot. And every time you do it, you lose a little bit of flavor, but sometimes it's just too harsh. So that's the difference. That's why with green tea specifically, we do a double steep to get rid of the first harsh cut. We have this one. Let's go test it out. All right, first I'm going to drink this very bitter, dark, urine-looking tea. Yeah, so what's happening is the back of my the back of my mouth is kind of ting tingling. I feel the I taste the bitterness of it. It's fine. I'm fine. Not the best, but that's there. If I go to a restaurant if I taste something like that, I'm like, ah, not the best. Not up to the John Lee Dashboard Two standards. Okay, this next one much clearer, right? It's like a good clear pho broth. Yeah, baby, that's what I want. Very pleasant. Not harsh, not going to crinkle my nose because it's bitter. That's what I want. That's something that you could just drink and chill out. You can do it during dim sum, dinner, whatever. This is, this is what I want. Double steep, double steep your green tea. All right, we are going to do an 1837 TWG black tea in this last container. This is the best thing right here. If I had friends, I would share this with them. But I don't, so I just drink it all myself. All right, we put about four teaspoons of TWG 1837 Black into my glass teapot with the strainer and another strainer, double strainer. And we're going to wait for our, our water to hit high boiling point. Cover it and let it steep for about five minutes. And we are done. All right, we just brewed our 1837 TWG tea for now. Now let's talk about what we can add to tea. So we've gone over the tea temperature to brew at the brewing time. We talked a little bit about loose leaf versus bag tea. I'm a big loose leaf person. I understand bag tea is way more convenient. Totally get it. I just find it to be not as flavorful as loose leaf tea. When I have a bag tea, I actually need to push the bag toward the cup to, to extract even more tea out of it, which I don't want to do. For green teas, usually, if you do add anything, it's usually honey or lemon, not so much milk or cream or whatever. A boba tea is its own thing. That's like dessert, so I'm not even going to talk about that. But for a regular drinking tea, usually lemon or it's honey, okay? Or some sugar if you want to go that route. For a black tea, that's where you usually will add in cream or milk or whatever. You do not usually want to add milk with lemon because that will cause it to curdle. And you're just going to be eating some cheese. And you don't want to do that. You also be careful about the temperature of your tea before you add milk or cream or whatever. Those things like milk or cream are going to drop the temperature of your tea. right? So you also don't want your tea to be too hot. Otherwise, you don't get the flavor from the cream or the milk, which is the whole point. So we're going to do some. I'm going to show you. I really love this one this is silk vanilla soy creamer i think this is fantastic i go through so many of these i think this is way better than cow milk i also think it's just better and better for you and it tastes better we are going to pour in our beautiful twg 1837 black tea it smells so good i wish you could smell it okay that's good right there and now I'm going to add in this silk vanilla soy creamer that I love. And what's cool about this is it only has three grams of sugar. I'm not adding anything extra. That's it. This is my favorite tea with my favorite adding, and it smells amazing. If we are ever fortunate enough to encounter each other and I have this tea in premise. I will gladly make you some of this tea. It is fantastic. Then I'll finally have friends. Mmm. That's a good day. This, this is, this is, that's how I need to start off a day. Man, do yourself a favor. It's expensive, but the 1837 TWG Black with the Silk Vanilla Soy Creamer. Fantastic. Hey, we did it. We went over tea. Thank you for letting me geek out on tea and everything I love about it. We went over hardware such as the kettle that you use. I like an electric kettle. I'll put links for everything so you can get exactly what I get, the gear that I get. 
I like an electric kettle that has different settings because it allows me to control temperature, but also it keeps my water at that temperature if I need it again later. I don't have to put it on a gas powered stove all the time. We also went over different types of teapots. I tend to like glass teapots because I think they're easier to clean, but I also like to see what's happening so I know when it's done. And I like teapots that have a that have a belly, that have a, a rounded body because that collects the tea dust in it. I also like teapots that have a steel strainer in them because I like loose leaf tea more than I like tea bags. In addition, when you went over brewing times, I have this nifty tea timer that I really like because it tells me when is the tea done. So I know that I'm not under brewing or I'm not over brewing if I don't, if I'm worried about over brewing. And lastly, we went over, I showed you all these supplements of tea that I usually drink on a very regular basis, as well as the different things you can add. Remember, lemon, honey are usually the main things, a little bit of sugar you want, and milk or cream. I really like this silk vanilla soy creamer. It's fantastic. And I hope you now have a bigger appreciation of tea. Hope you give it a shot. Tell me your favorite tea and tell me why it's your favorite tea. What type of tea do you like? Give me suggestions of new tea. I'm always checking out tea. One tea that I do not like, it's a Chinese tea, it's called Pu Er tea. Not for me. Too, too woody, tastes like a tree. That's it, I hope you learned something new. I hope you had fun learning about tea. You'll probably never think about it the same way ever again. So there you go, you're welcome. Think about John Lee, you think about tea, not coffee.